Go ahead. Go ahead, Caleb. Yeah. So I obviously I got the Pfizer shots and the booster and I have mm. all sorts of <laughs> surgeries and health issues and immunosuppressants and all these other issues from just my whole life. So why didn't I have a reaction to it when there's so many other people that are? Do we, do we know any answers of why certain people have it so bad when they get especially mRNA, I guess is what I'm talking about. It, it, it's, a, really. it's a great question, Caleb, and the answer is no, we don't know why yeah. some people. Yeah. I, I brought up in our show with Alex Berenson last week the fact that there is some very, very strong evidence that the, the majority of the people who had adverse reactions came from a relatively small group of batches of the, of the vaccine itself. There's actually a website called How Bad Was My Batch because right. it doesn't seem to be equivalently equally distributed. So I, we don't necessarily understand why some people have a worse reaction than others. We knew early on that people who had had and recovered from COVID seemed to be at higher risk for an adverse event when they got vaccinated subsequent to having COVID. Um, and But there just isn't enough data. And this is what I'm talking about. Normally, these are the sorts of things that get sorted out during the prolonged testing period, right. say six to eight years, where you start to understand who are the folks who are at higher risk for myocarditis, for neurologic complications, for allergic events, those sorts of things. We just don't have well, that data with these vaccines. Well, right. we have some data on young males who get who get the vaccine, that, yes, the two-part series, yeah. as, as recommended. We know that if they spread apart or just take one vaccine, they're much less likely to get myocarditis. And right. those, those, the young males, like under 30, particularly under 20 we are i am very concerned about because there is data now what they what the what the prevailing wisdom is is well it's the same as the incidence of myocarditis from covid i don't think so i don't think so no and no so and, I'm very and for worried example we group. don't so although you're absolutely correct uh drew we knew for we know for example that young males between 13 and 18 are at far higher risk of myocarditis from these vaccines than other people. But what we don't know, again, for lack of safety data, of lack of, of testing, is it for young males, for example, who have a BMI of over 18? Is it, is there something, right, are there right. other confounding factors? Is it associated also with taking certain medications? Is it people who have an underlying, you know, there, there are lots of things that other than just male between 13 and 18 that I right. would like to sort out. Is it related, for example, yeah. to body mass? Because we know that obesity itself uh, puts people at risk, not only for a worse outcome from COVID, but for all kinds of inflammatory things. So we just need more time. And, and that data, that data is not in yet. Right. I think that's a huge and, deal and because, is the fact that we don't have the data. They yeah. didn't have time to do the studies yeah. or to look into this. So I like there is no answer well, as to I was so confused because literally it was end of February to March of 2020. I was literally in the hospital, the sickest I've ever been. I had to spend 10 days in there getting surgery and I go into the hospital, never heard a thing about COVID. While I'm there, I'm watching the hospital TV screens as that cruise ship wasn't allowed to let the people off because they didn't know what this respiratory <laughs> thing was going on. I When I mm -hmm. left the hospital, mm -hmm. that same exact day I left the hospital, they had people set up at the doors taking people's temperature. Like the world had changed in those 10 days, that one period of time. Now you go through that, I had to go back to the hospital six months later, all of this stuff. I was on immunosuppressing medicines. I did not get COVID. Somehow I did not get COVID that entire first year and a half. I didn't get COVID until a year and a half later and I had moved and I had gotten all of the vaccines and everything. And I'm not, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not, I don't know anything about the risks or benefits of mRNA, but it was so odd to me that I did not catch it at all. Los, Los Angeles epicenter of all this stuff until a year later after I had gotten the vaccine. And I was much healthier then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very interesting because it, to uh, to what Dr. McCullough intimated that that or said full out that even for people who have you know allergies or are predicted to have yeah. a bad outcome, they still were suggesting. Yeah. I was in the yeah. hospital during the early right after the vaccines came out. I. I uh, had a bad orthopedic injury and needed surgery. And you know, Drew, when you when you go in the hospital, if you have an allergy, they put it not only on your wristband, but they emblazon it across mm -hmm. the front of your of, of your chart. So I had these two mm -hmm. big red stickers on my chart that everyone would see allergies, number one to tetanus, 
to tetanus toxoid. I have mm. a, a life-threatening allergy to that. And number two, my other only other allergy is polyethylene glycol, PEG, which is a key ingredient of the vaccines. Yet despite these two things emblazoned on my record, I had no less than 50 people coming into my room and telling me, <laughs> you really need to get these vaccines. You really need to get these vaccines. You know, you're in the hospital. You, and I'm saying, have you looked at my chart? I have an allergy mm. to two things, a, another, another type of a vaccine and to one of the key ingredients of these vaccines. And I did not get vaccinated for, for many reasons, not the least of which was these allergies. But I found it fascinating that physicians and nurses and everybody, their brother, was, was desperate for me to take something that I had every reason mm -hmm. to believe I would have a severe allergic reaction to. The CDC states that COVID-19 vaccines are safe, effective, and reduce the risk of COVID-19. Always consult with your personal physician before making any decision about your health.